So you've seen from the title and the thumbnail, this is a swingless golf club. This golf club can make me hit the golf ball 200 yards with no golf swing. Now for me to normally hit a shot 200 yards, I need something like a four iron and I need to hit a golf shot that looks like this. And all I need to do to hit this 200 yards is this. That is so good. Right, in this video, I'm gonna use this golf club out on the golf course. I'm gonna see if I can get a hole in one with this, because you'd imagine this is gonna be consistent. I'm gonna find out how far I can hit it, how short I can hit it, whether I can draw the golf ball, fade the golf ball. Let's find out what the swingless golf club can offer. That was ridiculously good. <laughs> okay, down on the fairway, and we've got two balls in prime position. This is the shot I hit with the swingless golf club. That's the shot I hit my four iron, pretty close together. Now, you might be thinking, who is this aimed at? Well, it's aimed at people around the world who no longer can swing the golf club and benefit from being out on the golf course and playing golf with their friends. They might have played for 20 years and for whatever reason, they now can no longer swing the golf club, but they still want to get out and play. That's who it's aimed at. And it's not cheap, this thing. This thing cost me $1,000, obviously from the USA. So I want to show people if it's any good. Is it worth the price? Because it's the price of a full set of golf clubs. But if you are desperate to get on the golf course, it kind of makes a lot of sense. That's who it's aimed at. Let's talk a little bit more about how it actually works. Well, as you know, I normally test proper golf clubs and I'm not an engineer by any means. So if I'm honest, I don't massively know how it operates. But what I do know is you need these little power strips. They're almost like little bullets that you insert into the head, you clamp it in, it has a lever at the back which allows you to change the power. So it'll hit it, what it claims, 200 yards down to as little as 75 yards. So I've got my little launch monitor, my Garmin, to see how far it actually goes and if that's true. You then pull the top to start it off. It has a little safety catch. You pull the safety catch and then you hit the trigger. So while we're on this nice quiet hole, I'm gonna test it for a few things. Let's test it on distances first. How accurate is the distance compared to the lever at the back? Also, apparently you can shape the golf shot with this club. So if you lower it, it'll draw. If you pick it up, it'll go more to the left, uh, more to the right as a fade. And then if we get a bit further down as well, we'll see if we can, let's see if it's like perfect golf shots. Let's see if I can actually hold one with this the swingless golf club. Right, first thing, let's go on the shortest distance. Let's go 75 yards and then work our way up to the biggest distance. Okay, so let's test it on its shortest distance first. 75 yards. Not sure what to expect with this. Oh, <laughs> oh that was different. It kind of like, it came out a lot flatter than I expected. It was almost more like a, a bump and run shot as opposed to being a flighted shot. Uh, that landed at 55 yards, but it estimated total distance 73 yards. So it's probably more working on total distance than it is carry distance. Right, let's crank it up. Let's go, to, let's go up to 125 yards. So one thing you have to do is you have to actually unclip it and then put the next cartridge in, which is a bit of a pain. I was hoping it would just be like automatic where you just pull the trigger and, and fire at will, but it's not. Right, 125 yards. So basically it doesn't change the face. It just, I'm guessing it just changes the power. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that was nice. It popped up a little bit higher. It carried 110, total distance 120. So for a 125 shot, it's not far off. Let's go up to 175 yards before then we get to the limit. Next distance up 175 yards. So I can see the last ball. So it should go 50 yards further than that one. Let's make sure I've got it lined up. I'm not even gonna look at the ball this time. Oh, that's so good. 
that's pretty accurate. That looks like it's gone. Yeah, it's gone 165 carry for 177 total distance. That's pretty good. Right, let's crank it up to the full capacity, to 200 yards of distance. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, last one, 200 yards, total distance. Let's make sure I'm gonna hit the fairway. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that is ridiculous. How good was that? Shoots off like a rocket and then goes up in the air. It's the more power. Um, it's saying its total distance was 195 yards. Oh my, the smell of that. It's like gunpowder. Okay, so distances were pretty spot on. What it said on the lever was around about the distance that the ball totally finished. It's interesting because it's just all about the power that goes through this cartridge. Depends on how far that ball is projected out. The 200 yard shot is the most impressive because it, it has that real speed to it. It pops up in the air and flies like crazy. I want to test it on a couple of other things because believe it or not, you can actually shape the golf shot. You can make it draw or fade and hit it high and low. I'm so intrigued to test that. because I'm slightly dubious about that. That generally in a normal golf swing would require a few moving elements. So can this swingless golf club achieve that? But before I do, I just thought, you know what? There's gonna be times where you don't hit this thing straight. So I'm gonna test it out the rough. I've got light rough, medium rough, thick rough. Let's hit three shots and see if it can escape these tricky situations. Okay, that one was pretty easy. Yeah, I'd take that out of that rough. Okay, medium rough test. I'd be, I'd be impressed if it could get out of here with no issues. Because that's a, that's a snaggy lie. Let's make sure I'm aiming correctly. Yeah, it struggled. I thought it might do. And now I've got to go into the deep stuff. I can't imagine for one minute it's going to get it out of this lie. That's horrible. Can I have a look at this lie before I hit it from here? So this is a nasty lie. Look at that. <laughs> now for most golfers in that situation, just getting it out, even if I got it past this next tee would be a result because that's horrible. So I'm not expecting one minute to fire this golf ball 175 yards out of this rough, but let's, let's see how it does. Let's see if I can just get out and get back into play. No way. <laughs> that is down there and back on the fairway. That weirdly went further than the second shot. I think it all depends on how much grass is between the face of this and the ball. That was very impressive out of that lie. I would 100% take that shot. Right, let's get down there and see if I can shape the ball. Okay, just a quick one. If you've watched this far, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. You don't wanna miss out on any of the videos coming your way. Okay, next thing I'm gonna try is trying to shape the ball. Apparently, if you angle the head, it can have an impact on the shape of it. It changes the line angle effectively. So let's go draw first. I need to drop the handle lower. Feels like the face is just pointing more left now. Let's see if that draws. There, dudes. <laughs> it drew. It was a, it, 150 yards away, and that started on the flag and then actually shaped back to the left of it. So a draw would do that move right to left. So effectively a fade should move more left to right. It's good if you're out on the golf course because you can get closer to the flag if it's in a tricky situation. So this time I'm gonna lift the handle much higher so the lie is more to the right. And it's too much, but it has faded. That's mad that you can actually shape the ball. Right, shaping test done. Let's see if I can uh, 
experiment a bit more with this. Right, this is a bit of a mad shot to try. I'm in the trees and normally if I have to swing a golf club, this shot now becomes impossible because this tree's literally in the way, I'd have to swing it this way. So I'm gonna try it for two things. One, apparently if you lean it forward, it comes out lower. So that should be good if I can get through these trees. And two, how does it operate in this situation? I mean, it could be a massive advantage. Let's see how it does, so cock it up. Need to aim. Hopefully it doesn't ricochet off one of the trees. Oh! <laughs> okay. It went out low. I didn't have to swing, but it uh, came out too low. It actually hit the bank. But that was interesting because you can change it to change the flight. I'm enjoying this so far. Okay, next couple of tests. I'm going to try it from short range. The shortest distance it can go is 75 yards. We tested that a minute ago, but what, how does it react into the greens? And also then, I'm gonna jump on a par three and see how close I can get to a hole in one. In theory, this should give me the best advantage ever for getting it close. Before we get on to that par three next, I've just come to collect those four golf balls that went through the green. That, in fairness, that's fairly consistent distances there. I mean, it didn't help me on that shot because again, the ball flight was way too low and I couldn't stop it on that green, but that's worth noting. Oh, that's the best one. Go on, be good. Be good. That's not bad. It's ran past the flag. It's just gone a little bit long, but that wasn't bad at all. So first thing, shorter shots. It struggled. It doesn't get the height. Everything's like a bump and run shot. So you've got to land it way short. And when things are quite hard and dry like this today, it just runs forever. You do also need, I think it's worth noting, you still need to chip around the greens and you still need to put, even when using this swingless golf club. I also tested it on a par three. I didn't get a hole in one, but in fairness, it was fairly consistent. It got me around the green. No spectacular shots, but not the end of the world. I'll be honest with you. I first bought this product. As I mentioned, it cost me $1,000 as a bit of fun. I thought it was a bit of a gimmicky tool. The more I've used it, the more I've realized, and I referred back to it at the start of this video, who is this aimed at? It made me more think about that golfer, the guy who's been playing for all of his life and for whatever reason, can no longer swing a golf club. He might have been in an accident or suddenly you know, got arthritis, but he still wants to come out and play with his pals and benefit from golf. And as much as this product isn't perfect, neither is golf and it still requires some level of skill. And I think because of that, it wouldn't get boring using this if you can no longer play golf. It's interesting, it's a very, very interesting product. As I mentioned, it's a it's thousand dollars, but if you, if the only club you're gonna need, this and a putter, and it means you can go and play golf, then I think it's worth it. It was good fun though, I enjoyed it. Guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned, lots more to come, and we shall see you next time.